Hey guys, uh, this is Devin Adams. Welcome back to my last video in this series using the Forti Manager as a Forti Analyzer. And I thought I'd take this opportunity because honestly, I don't know when else I'm going to do it. Uh, how to show how to configure the Forti Manager as a local FDN server. So before we start here, something to understand the Forti gates, when they're licensed properly, uh, go out to the FortiGuard services, right? Which is uh, FortiNet's pretty much uh, support license that does the signatures and also the web querying and all that jazz. Uh, it goes out there for certain updates. So one of them is updating the signature database. Also the uh, the um, engines themselves, the, the 40 OS updates, so on and so forth. And another one is for like web filtering or anti-spam, which actually sends a live query out to the FDN for a web category uh, rating or maybe a spam filtering rating. And uh, that could be, oh, hi guys, guys. I always fall asleep when I'm talking about uh, updates. Anyways, um, <laughs> I had a little narcolepsy there. Um, anyways, the uh, FortiGate still needs to traverse the internet. And even though the, the FortiGuard servers are picked by time zone and there's a lot of them, nothing's going to beat latency wise of having your own FortiGuard server right in your internal domain. So, and that's exactly what Forna Manager allows you to do. Now, also a reason why I say that this is a bonus is because I'm not too sure if it's going to let me do this with an unlicensed Forna Manager. So I might have to stop the video and drop a license on it. But the whole idea here, guys, is there is no separate license other than your Forna Manager license and licensed Forta Gates to have your Forta Manager act as a FortiGuard proxy. Um, and what's nice about this too is that it can store images for 40 OS updates. It can store obviously the antiviruses, but most importantly, it can store the database that does the web querying. And that way the latency on it, it's, it's going to be very, very reduced. And on top of that, um, for our end users, things are just going to seem a little more snappier. So uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get onto my computer here. And the first place you're going to want to check is actually your 40 gate. All right. And you're going to want to check your licensing. So if we go to system and we go to our FortiGuard, all right, we're going to see all of the services that we're licensed for. Okay. Now, this is what needs to be active in order for the FortiGate to accept to act as an FDN on on the Forti, on the FortiGate's behalf. So what, did I say that right? You need to have your FortiGate's license in order for the Forti Manager to act as an FDN on the FortiGuard's behalf. So I just wanted to verify that. All right, and we're actually going to plug in those settings right here. Okay, uh, but once we verify that we are licensed. I'm going to go to my Forta Manager. I'm going to log in. And like I said, I'm not too sure if I'm allowed to do this with a, a trial license of my uh, Forta Manager, but I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Regardless, you'll still be able to see how to configure that because uh, as you can see, I have 14 days until the world explodes. Um, and I'm essentially going to go to my FortiGuard tab here. All right, so as you can see, I have used other devices in the past because I use this image for my class, all right? But these are going to be the Forta managers that have been asked to uh, use the, the, these are going to be Forta gates that have been configured to use the Forta manager as a FDN, all right? So um, that will appear here shortly once we plug it in. But because we've already done it for logging, it's already showed up and it's already shown us too, if you guys notice, that we are licensed for these certain features. See the little green check mark here? That's because in the last video, we joined this FortiGate and it already reached out to the FortiGuard services and let us know that yes, it is in fact a license. So in order to make it happen, we need to go to our advanced settings, okay? And we need to say enable antivirus and IPS. Bloop. We pick our FortiGates that we're doing it for. All right, so what version numbers? Now, if you're running 5.6 or something higher, you'll need to update your 40 uh, OS on your Forti Manager. All right, but we're rocking 
and then also enable web services. And as you can see, I've used this before, but once we hit apply, what's going to happen is the Florida manager is going to go out and it's going to start building these packages. And these are the actual antivirus databases. These are actually the IPS databases, the geo databases, right, that the FortiGuard provides. And also, and that's for updates, and also for the web querying. All right, so this does take a moment, all right, to get up to speed. So don't be surprised if you don't see anything there to begin with. Um, for me, it took like a good few hours to get everything up to date. They suggest that you just uh, let it download in the background and come back the next day <laughs> or something like that. So, but once you're up to an actual speed here, you can start using it on your on your FortiGates. All right. So, uh, what I mean here is we can now point the FortiGates to uh, the Forti Manager to use FortiGuard services. So, once again, guys, make sure that you go to Advanced in your FortiGuard and you turn on the services. All right. And also, if you're not using any of these products, turn them off. It'll save you download bandwidth. All right. Okay. So, and then the next step is to go into our system and make sure that the interfaces that are facing the FortiGates in question, right, has the management turned on. So, I'm going to go here to uh, network. And as you can see here, I have web filtering and FortiGate update services turned on on port 1 and that's ex exactly what I want okay so these two say accept requests for updates accept web filtering queries from devices that are registered underneath this subnet so that looks good to me alright so I'm gonna hit apply alright and and that is it guys now you just let it download the the databases okay and then the next thing that you do is that you go to your FortiGate, you go to FortiGuard services, right? And as you can see here, we have an override FortiGuard servers. So we're going to say new, and we're going to put in the IP address of our Forti Manager. Okay? Ha! <laughs> Too many too many uh, bits in my octets. All right. And also, this is saying, do you want it for antivirus and IPS, web filtering, or both? We're going to say both. And we're going to hit OK. And what's nice about this is you see where it says fall back to public FortiGuard servers, right? So for some reason, if it loses communication with the, the Forti Manager, you go right back to where you were. And that is going off of the list that the Forti. The FortiGate found automatically for the uh, the FortiGuard servers that are the closest by. So now that we hit apply, all right, it will now start using. Okay, it will start using the Forti Manager for its FortiGuard services. And like I said, you're gonna want to make sure that you wait for it to to get up to speed. All right, for that to happen too. So. Uh, something else I should mention. Um, I wonder why that's taking so long. Anyways, probably because I'm running this all on a, a laptop. So, um, but anyways, uh, while I, you know what, it's probably because I turned off or I didn't turn on anti spam. So it's probably like, ah, uh, anyways. Um, but don't forget. That you also need the management interface turn see see how long that took <laughs> anyways um, you got to have that f m g access on the same subnet as the Florida manager to do those queries to do those antivirus updates so on and so forth so um, but that's it guys now that we do that you know we can go down to our uh, uh, Florida manager once again just to verify that it is using it as a FortiGuard server. We can come down here to our package, go to receive status or service status, and there it is. It's showing that my FortiGate did talk to it just a few minutes ago and asked if it was up to date with its with its uh, antivirus. 
and it's IPS and guess what it said yeah I did I did that isn't that cool these are the ones that I used in the past lab that's why you're seeing them there and then also you can see how often it's going to reach out right to the 40 guard see the 40 edge there right that is brand new that is brand new that it's going out here and asking for queries so there you guys go your Forta manager is now acting as a FortiGuard server on behalf of the FortiGuard services and as you can see the licensing is bound to the Forta gates not the Forta manager and personally I think that is a very generous of Fortinet to do um, in other words you don't have to pay for a separate like proxy license or whatever uh, to get the benefits and the speed and all that jazz um, anyways I hope you enjoyed that I know that was kinda outside the scope of using the 40 manager as a Fortinet analyzer but I still think that is a, a good reason to use uh, uh, the Forta manager on its own so if you have any questions guys send me an email you know my email um, and uh, yeah thanks a lot I'll see you guys next time